God bless all of you, and I'd like to welcome you to our showcase here in Studio E. I have the great privilege today of interviewing Michelle Pageant and Aaron, and they're going to share with you an extraordinary event that is getting ready to take place in San Diego. It is unique because it is a tent meeting, and what we are now seeing in the body of Christ are individuals who God is calling at this time in history once again to begin to erect tents in various geographical locations throughout this nation and to hold supernatural moves of God, revival meetings that will change the course of history are happening in tent meetings. Michelle, tell us about this move of God that is getting ready to happen. Okay. Um, the event is called Back to the Future, and it is August 16th through August the 19th. It will be take place in Chicano Park in San Diego, California. Uh, we are gathering all... Um, the Lord told me that we are to unite the races, unite the ages, and also unite the denominations. So we have... Um, People coming to minister from five to we have one as old as 88 years old that will be also, we will be getting a word from. So you have an individual who is renowned for his experiences in revival tent meetings that is going to be a part of this event. Uh, could you tell us briefly about him and just give us a sense of his history? Absolutely. Uh, the gentleman's name, his name is Buford Dow. Uh, Mr. Dow is a legend. He's a legend. And he's a truly a legend. He walked with over 100 different great men and women of God, uh, to include Amy Sibyl McPherson, Catherine Coleman, A.A. A. Allen, William Branham, Jack Coe, and the list goes on. <laughs> so he is a legend and somewhat hidden in the sense of the understanding of the body of Christ as to who he really is and the significance of what he has experienced and also in regards to the history and the anointing that he's carried for all of these decades. Uh, tell me, Aaron, what do you think about what is getting ready to transpire in San Diego? And furthermore, what do you feel is the call of this time in history? Because when we look at the statement that's made in regards to this event, it's talking about returning back to the future. Yeah, no, and, and that's a great question, and I think the, the big component is time. And uh, my name is Ben. I'm a pastor of a church in Sid Canoe uh, in San Diego. But the, I was praying before I came, and I said, God, what do you want? What do you want to talk to people about what's going on here? And the Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, time. And I saw this clock, and he said, it is time. It's time for a revival to break out again. Hallelujah. It's time for the Glory seeds that were sown Hallelujah. in the past to be sown again. And it's time for a heaven to open and for God to heal this land. God is causing a wave that's coming through San Diego, and we're seeing it. Hundreds of people are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, getting filled with the presence of God, getting healed on the streets in Mexico and in San Diego, and it is crazy. Stuff that people didn't think was possible in California is breaking out everywhere, and it's just the power of God. But God, God spoke to me specifically and said, let people know that it's time, that the prayers that people have been praying are being answered, that the, the prayers that American churches are praying and crying out are happening right now, and that the time of heaven for revival. Now, I, I'm a big person. I believe revival happens the, the day my feet hit the streets, and I go out and pray for people. Amen. I think that's a form of revival, but there's also a season where God opens up heaven, and there's a divine thing that happens, and that season is now, and God is opening it up right now. And it's, I mean, it's just crazy. And so God's going to pour out his presence on the park. There's going to be a lot of people empowered to move in the power of God. There's going to be a feeling where the, just where the Holy Spirit comes down in strength and power. J Chicano Park in that area, it's an area where there's a lot of hurting people. And we know that God loves people who are hurting because Jesus said to the Amen. poor, the gospel is preached. And God wants to bring the gospel of the kingdom of heaven to the poor people. And he also wants to move in signs and wonders and miracles, just like in the old days in Azusa Street. And God's redigging some of those old wells, and the fire of God is going to fall like crazy. 
Come on, Jesus. But it's time. And I kept hearing that over and over again. It's time. It's time. And I'd encourage people who are listening, pray. Pray for California right now. Pray for Mexico right now. Pray Amen. for San Diego. Because God is doing something new, and God is doing something fresh. But we need the prayers of this nation, and we need the prayers of the world. People are watching from different countries. Pray for America, because America, people think of us as a great, strong Christian nation. But we need your prayers. We need to become who we're supposed to be again. You know, what, what you're saying is that God has appointed times. Yes, sir. The day of Pentecost was an appointed time. It Come was something that was specifically designated in the, the Judeo calendar. And what happened on the day of Pentecost happened because God had sovereignly and providentially appointed that day for them to gather. And that day brought Come into on. manifestation Come on now. the birth of the church. Come on. Amen. The Bible says a suddenly occurred. Come on. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven Come as on. of a mighty rushing wind. Come on. Yes. And the Bible said it filled the whole house Come on. where the apostles were. Mm. Who, and it said that there appeared cloven mm. tongues as of fire. Come and on. it set upon yes. each of them. And yes. they were filled oh, with yes. the Spirit. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Come on. So there was a supernatural phenomenon. Come on. that took Come on. place at an appointed time. Come on. Yes. Tell me about what you are feeling in your spirit in this time in history. Wow, I feel like this move of God is something like we've never, ever seen before. Just like Pastor Ben was saying, uh, you know, the main thing is repentance. Uh, we have to really get on our faces before the Father and cry out. And as we cry out unto the Father that he is going to come and he is going to heal our land. But it's going to take, it's not going to take one church or two churches. It's called on. unifying the body of Christ. Because we all have something to give. Come we on. all have something to offer. Mm. And that's what God has called us to do. He's called us to mm. unify as one voice unto him. Mm. You know what's interesting about that statement? Frank Bartleman said in his book, Azusa Street, he said, the depths of revival are determined by the depths of repentance. Yes. How much are we really willing to change? Mm. How broken do we really desire to be? Come how on. much contrition and how much true repentance are we willing to allow ourselves to be subject to through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit? Because God will move sovereignly if we obey his word. Yes. The Bible declares to us, if my people who are Come called on. by yeah. my Come name on. will humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn oh, from their wicked like ways, is. then I will hear from heaven and I'll heal the land. Come Tell on. me what you think about that, Ben. Come on, Jesus. You know, well, Michelle is talking, the Holy Spirit put in my heart, and he said, church, not like normal, everyday church. And Amen. I think there's a call of God that's calling us out of the churches. And I'm not talking about running away from church and all that stuff. There's balance and there's structure, praise the Lord. But there's a call of God that's calling us out of the four walls and onto the streets yes. to move in the signs and the wonders and power of God. And what has been become to known as typical Christian culture. And what's normal for Christianity won't be normal anymore because God wants to shake things up in America. Because God wants to use America to wreck the world with his love yes. and with his power. Yes. And there's something new that's happening. There's a new season. There's a new wine. And God's going to use it to change the whole world. And I believe 100% of what you're talking about, repentance, because we have to, we have to be, experience a real God. And what we tell people is church has become a religious thing in a lot of places. But Jesus stirred everything up. Wherever the disciples went, there was riot or there was revival. And Jesus stirred up the status quo. And real people have real problems, and they need a real God, a God with power, a God who answers with fire. So when signs and wonders and miracles happen, they give glory to God. And the Bible tells us that when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, that it was for one specific purpose that manifested in many others. Yep. Jesus says that not many days hence from now, you will be baptized yep. with fire and the yes. Holy Spirit. And he said, then yep. you will be something. You will be my witnesses. Yep. If you catch on fire, Come on. I guarantee you, Come on. you will run. Come yes. on. Amen. And what is needed more than anything else in this time in history is for people to be baptized with fire. Come on. Michelle, tell us about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, wow. We really are seeing a lot of that everywhere we go. I tell you, uh, we're just seeing lives transformed. 
just by them, you know, gaining salvation and being baptized in fire. That lives are just so transformed. We're seeing people in Mexico on the yep. streets. We've seen two cartel men give their lives to the Lord, get baptized in fire, and turn around, and they were also praying for people and baptizing them in fire in the same very yep. night. And this is what we're called to this day and age because this is the day of Pentecost that we're looking at. This is the new book of Acts church that's arising. And this is what God's called us to walk into. So, Pastor, there's an actual prophecy that has been spoken concerning revival in California yeah. coming from Mexico and moving from yes. Mexico northward. Right. Tell us about that. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of prophecies. And the cool thing is the Bible says that God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And a better word for foolish would be the least likely things because you have to understand that Jesus, with all the divinity of God, came down and was born in a manger in one of the lowliest places. And God likes to use the foolish things. And I prayed... Uh, about a year ago, and I said, Holy Spirit, why aren't a lot of the churches seeing the revival that we're praying for? And the Holy Spirit gave me the metaphor of fire. And he said, Ben, fire needs oxygen, it needs a spark, and it needs two types of wood, kindling and wet wood. And he said, the spark is the evangelist, it's the revival. <laughs> the oxygen is created by a prayer atmosphere. And he said, but the wood is what's been missing from the churches. And he said, the dry wood, or the, um, the kindling is the poor people, the hurting people. And Mexico is full of hungry, hungry, hurting people. And then a lot of us in church have become more of what I'd call more wet wood, where we've just become normalized. But when we see the kindling go up in flames, when we see people just get baptized, when we see the hurting people, when we see the gospel preached to the poor, when we see the people who need Jesus receive it, then the wet wood, even the wet wood will catch on fire and revival is going to break out. And that's where I think it's in Mexico, because that's where the hurt is. Amen. So it's interesting to note that dry wood burns best. And not only that, Revival is something that must manifest through what is called spontaneous combustion. Yes, sir. You see, uh, during the first Great Awakening, these words were spoken by John Wesley concerning what he did as a revivalist. He said, I set myself on fire. Come on. Now, when you become divinely incinerated, you will radiate supernatural heat and things that are around you will catch on fire a person that's already on fire will cause others to catch on fire on. michelle tell me about some of the experiences you've had in the impartation of the fire of the holy spirit in your ministry uh well let's see i mean i mean we see, like i said we see so much in mexico that uh I mean, we see blind eyes open. We see deaf ears open. We see people get out of wheelchairs who were paralyzed for 25 years. I mean, we see every, every aspect. We see deliverances on the street. We see people that are mentally insane that will go back, and when we go back, they're normal. Uh, we saw a guy, he came up to us last time, who was a, addicted to heroin for 15 years, and he came up to us. He's completely set free of all addictions. And he is going to church on a regular basis. He's being discipled, which is the key thing, is discipleship in this, yeah. in this hour. Yeah. Now, the Bible tells us as Christians, these signs shall follow those that believe. It tells us that demons will be cast out. Come on. Blind eyes will be opened. Come yeah. on. The deaf will hear. The dumb will speak. The lame will walk. The Bible tells us that the dead will even be raised. Come on. Yes. And if you don't go anywhere, nothing is going to follow you. Come on. But if you go, if you do what the Bible tells us to do, go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel <laughs> of the kingdom, <laughs> yes. things will manifest. Isn't that right, Pastor? That's 100%, 100% right. And the, I mean, the crazy thing is the Bible also says that God confirmed his word with signs and wonders following. So as you go out and you say, Jesus is going to heal you today in the Walmart, Jesus is going to show up and heal that person. When you put yourself on a limb, God's going to show up. We've had um, about three months ago, we had a guy raised from the dead. We've yes. seen hundreds and hundreds of miracles. Legs are growing out. Backs are being healed. How many, Michelle, in the last few months, how many cancer people? How many people oh, with God. cancer have you seen healed? Um, five. Five? 
Five. Come on. Yeah. Doctors' reports and everything. Yeah, uh, with um, stage four cancer. Come on. So we, we're just seeing the power of God, and it's exactly Hallelujah. what you Come on. Glory to God. <laughs> it's exactly what you said. The only reason God shows power is because it's the dinner bell for salvation. God is knocking on the door of people's hearts and saying, I am real. You tried to keep me out of schools. You tried to keep me out of America, but I am real, and yes. I'm breaking down the doors. I'm breaking down the restrictions. I'm breaking down the restraints, and I'm coming for you because I love you with the undying, unresenting love. Now, there is an event that's getting ready to happen this weekend in Mexico. Tell us about that. Um, so we take teams every single month down to uh, Tijuana, Mexico, to the Red Light District. And what we do is we minister to the uh, young ladies in the streets. We minister to the, their pimps. And we also minister to the cartel. We minister to the people in the gentlemen's club. Wherever God send us, we go. Yeah, and we're, we're, this time we're partnering with Ben Lim's ministry. Yes. And he's in Los Angeles. And um, what they're doing is they've rented out uh, one of the coliseums. And so they're believing for 50,000 souls. They've networked with a lot of local pastors and yes. revivalists. And so we're going to bring about 40, 50 of our people from San Diego Amen. and hit the streets. And we love, love, love street evangelism yeah. because that's the call that Jesus said. He said, go into all the world. He didn't say, go into all the world, go into church and sit there for 40 years. He said, go into all the world. <laughs> and preach the gospel. And a lot of times we're praying for uh, the rapture when we should be praying for revival. And a lot of times we say, oh, America is so dark, uh, the soil is so hard. And Jesus looked at the same soil in Israel and said the harvest is ripe. And it's 100% about your you. perspective is whether the harvest is ripe or whether the soil is hard. Now, where is the stadium that is being rented out? Tijuana. Where specifically? Is there a particular city? Uh, are, are there is there some particular information about the it, location? It's the, it's the Tijuana Coliseum. And um, if you get on his website, there's information if you want to participate or if you'd like to donate or partner with, the, with them or with the ministry, uh, that, that would be wonderful. They're, they're looking for 100 revivalists to come down and participate this weekend. And so the address to the website is? That's a great question. So it is in conjunction with Ben Lim's ministry, Correct. Right? Ben, that is correct. Yeah, if you just Google Ben Lim, his website's going to pop right up, and you'll be able to find information, and that's just B-E-N-L-I-M. Okay, yeah. amen. Now, tell everyone once again about the event that's getting ready to happen in San Diego in this tent ministry. Wow. We're really believing that God is going to move in the most amazing way, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to come, and He's just going to take over, and that once repentance takes place, that God is going to unify and He's going to unite the races and the churches, the ages, the nominations, that we're all going to become one, and that we're all going to be set ablaze for the fire of God and with His love. That's the key thing, is the love. Yeah. Our, our biggest thing with, with moves like this, and I think this is, is pretty um, um, similar to what's happened in the past with revivals, is we've been praying, we've been seeking, we have a 70-day prayer and fast going on right now with a lot of people in a lot of churches, and we want the Holy Spirit to show up, and we want it to be His show. And we want to see what he has for the people. Yes. And we're, we're believing we're going to preach repentance. We're going to preach holiness. We're going to move like we always do because he always shows up. And there's always deliverances. There's always signs. There's always one. And it's going to happen again, and it's going to be crazy. But this specific thing, it's going to be his show, and he's going to show up. And the fire of God is going to consume the altar. <laughs> and Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, they were coming against him. And he said, let the God who answers by fire, fire. be the real God. And God's going to show up in fire and just show hallelujah off. come on yeah pray the prayer of release of fire my brother come on come on that's so good i was getting that for the last five minutes god's <laughs> like i was gonna ask you come on Jesus. come on <laughs> father i ask in jesus name right now god yes, i ask lord. for everyone watching for everyone listening no matter where they are in the world god i ask right now in the name of jesus i want you guys put your hands out and put your expectancy out that god is going to touch you and he's going to release the fire of god into your heart and the passion for revival in your country wherever you are and father i ask now 
in Jesus' name, for the fire of God to fill everyone up now. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are not a respecter of persons, Father. But I thank you, everyone who's hungry. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for, for life, for they will be filled. And I thank you for blessings on people who are hungry and thirsty right now, for the hunger and thirst for righteousness. Father, I ask for a filling in Jesus' name right now. I ask for a filling in Jesus' name right now. Touch hearts, fill them. And I command the fire of heaven right now in people's hearts and minds more, Holy Spirit, now. Increase that now. And that spirit of oppression that's been bugging you, I break it off in Jesus' name. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I command abundant life to flow through your body now in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Baptize and fill me. Baptize, baptize and fill me. With your presence. With, with your, your presence. And with your fire. And with, and with your, your fire. fire. And I want all you guys to take two deep breaths. Take it in. And some of you guys are going to have other tongues hit you right now. And God's going to release it. Come on, fire. I'm getting a word of knowledge. Yep. There's somebody on the air right now yep. that you have been suffering from suicide. Yep. A spirit of suicide. And I see in the Spirit mama. of the Lord in coming into your home right now. In and I see the Spirit of the Lord that is cutting off the head of that dragon, of the enemy right now, of suicide that's been on your generational bloodline for years and years and years. And you shall live. You shall live to inherit. You shall see the inheritance that God has given you. I also am getting a word of knowledge right now that somebody has problem in their lower back right now. And the Spirit of the Lord has come upon you right now. And you you shall be healed right now. The healing power of the Lord Jesus Christ is falling on your body right now. Right now. I also have another word of knowledge for somebody's uh, right shoulder. The right shoulder. God is healing the right shoulder right now. I see right now the nerves in the right shoulder are being completely healed and realigned right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Spirit is manifesting right now through the airwaves. God is extending his mercy. Revival at its core is an act of divine mercy whereby God supernaturally breathes new life into that which is becoming a corpse. If you're dead spiritually and you need reviving, you need to get to these meetings. Yes. You need to come to the tent so that you can experience the renewing power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to ask Michelle to pray the prayer of repentance on behalf of those who need to experience the power of the Holy Spirit in brokenness and contrition and true repentance. Wow, Father, we just thank you right now. We thank you for your love right now, and we thank you for your fire, God. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are welcome everywhere that we go, God, and that you come by fire that you baptize us in fire right now. And Lord God, we just ask you right now to forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive us of all of our sins right now, God. We ask you to just come right now and baptize us and fill us. Fill us right now from the top of our head to the soles of our feet right now, God. Yes, Lord, we just repent right now for the sins of our forefathers right now. We repent for everything, God, that is in our generational bloodline right now. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming like never before, that you are a mighty rushing wind and a mighty rushing wave, that you are coming and you are going to fill us. You're going to fill your people like never before. We thank you, Lord, that you are infilling us, that you're infilling us right now with your love, your spirit of love. Woo, we thank you, Father. We thank you for all that you're doing right now in San Diego and all, Mexico and all around the world. And we give you all glory and honor and praise right hallelujah, now. Hallelujah. Glory, honor, and praise right now hallelujah. in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. Guys, I'm going to just ask if any of you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to just give you an invitation, an opportunity to do that right now. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me about three months ago, and he said that there is a wave of evangelism that's going to sweep the Middle East. And there's a lot of you in Pakistan. There's a lot of you in different parts of the Middle East. And God in Egypt, God's putting a, a, just a love in your heart for something real and something 
to something real. You've been saying something's fake about what I'm doing. I don't see something. I want something real. And God has put that in your heart because he's knocking on the door of your heart and he wants your salvation. And I, right now, I want you to say, Jesus, come into my life. Take over my life. I'm sorry for anything wrong I did. And just become Lord of my life. Just repeat that and give your heart to Jesus right then. Just accept it. Amen. And God bless you. And we look forward to being with you again. Hallelujah.